From a young age, we've always heard that drinking milk can help our bones grow strong. Milk is a great source of calcium, but the development and strength of our bones is regulated by intricate signaling pathways. These pathways lead to the gene expression of everything we need to form our skeleton. One pathway that plays a key role in regulating cellular processes, osteoblast differentiation, and mammalian bone formation is the TGF-beta BMP signaling pathway. TGF-beta, or transforming growth factor beta, and bone morphogenetic protein, BMP, are only two of the 40-plus members of the TGF-beta superfamily. Ligand binding of these different proteins have different effects on bone development, but their pathways operate by the same general mechanism. To better understand TGF-beta BMP signaling, we should put this entire process in reverse. Bones are synthesized by specialized cells called osteoblasts. Osteoblast expression is promoted by transcription factors and transcriptional coactivators. SMAD-dependent TGF-beta and BMP pathways work to promote the expression of those proteins through canonical signaling. It's a complicated process but can be broken down into three stages. One, activation, two, complex formation, and three, migration. Starting the activation stage, a signal must first be transmitted across the plasma membrane. This signal is created by ligand binding to TGF-beta type 2 and type 1 serine threonine kinase receptors. Neogenin is a transmembrane protein that helps BMP bind to receptors and further transmit the signal. The receptors are activated when type 2 receptor phosphorylates type 1 receptor. In turn, this phosphorylates specific SMAD proteins, activating them as well. These intracellular signaling proteins are like the postmen of this pathway. They deliver messages from outside the cell straight to the nucleus. One big difference between TGF-beta and BMP pathways are the types of SMAD proteins that get activated. SMAD-dependent TGF-beta signaling activates SMAD2 and 3, while SMAD-dependent BMP signaling activates SMAD1, 5, and 8. This leads us to stage 2, complex formation. In both pathways, the activated SMAD will form a complex with SMAD4. Only through the formation of this complex can it enter the nucleus and control gene expression. That being said, SMAD4 is a key protein in both TGF-beta and BMP signaling and is necessary for proper bone development. Researchers actually found mutated SMAD4 deficient mice had reduced levels of osteoblast activity. So it comes as no surprise these mice also had significantly lower bone masses and densities. If the mice did have SMAD4, the signaling pathway could continue with stage three. SMAD complex migration to the nucleus to control gene expression. We recall one difference in these pathways are the kinds of SMADs used to deliver signals. Another difference is the genes that are regulated by TGF-beta and BMP pathways. As you can see, the signaling pathway is extremely complex. At some point, osteogenesis and osteoblast differentiation must stop. That is why tightly regulated negative feedback loops are also necessary for these pathways. When activated, SMAD7 inhibits the TGF-beta signaling pathway. It does this by degrading the receptor and preventing the activation of SMAD2 and 3. In BMP signaling, SMAD6 will inhibit SMAD1, 5, and 8 by competitively binding to SMAD4. Binding to SMAD6 and SMAD4 creates a complex with no practical use in the cell. Knowing the key components and mechanisms behind these canonical pathways can help to understand how misregulation can seriously affect bone growth and development. It is also the first step in making medical advancements towards finding treatments for certain bone diseases, such as dwarfism and short limb development.